Hi guys. So today we're going to look at how to use matrices to transform different polygons. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take a shape and its vertices. We need to create a matrix from it. So looking at this triangle here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a matrix where the top row is going to be all the X coordinates and the bottom row is going to be all of the Y coordinates. So this is going to have two rows in it. So the matrix that's going to represent this, so I'm going to start with A, so 2, negative 1, 0, 4, and negative 4, 2. So this is the matrix that represents that triangle that's shown. Again, the X coordinates are in the first row and the Y coordinates are in the second row. So the first two transformations we do are going to be pretty simple. We're going to start with just a translation. So I'm going to take this triangle and move it two units right and three units down. Well, the operation I apply here is just going to be simple addition. So I'm going to come up with a matrix that I could add to this that's going to translate this, this matrix, or sorry, translate this triangle to units right and three units down. So in order to do that, whatever numbers are going to be in the top of my second matrix, that's going to be that horizontal change. So since we're going two units to the right, I'm going to make every entry there two. Now remember, when we add and subtract matrices, they need to have the same dimensions. Uh, now the second part says it's going three units down. So since that's affecting the bottom row, I need the bottom row to all have the same values. Now when I combine those two matrices together, I end up with my new matrix, which if I were to go ahead and go graph these points now, so like 4, negative 4, two, 1, and negative 2, negative 1, you can see, see it's still that same shape, it's just been translated two units right and three units down. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take that same matrix and we're going to figure out how to dilate it by a factor of two. Um, so any sort of enlargement or reduction, all we have to do is just multiply by a scalar. So since I want that scale factor to be two, I'm going to take that matrix and multiply it by two. That's going to multiply every number in that matrix by that scalar. And then I have my new matrix. So again, the coordinates of my new point would be 4, 2, and I'm not going to have enough space in here for you to see it, but 4, 2, 0, 8, and negative 8, 4. And you can see again, it would still have that same shape. It would just be much larger. Oh, and that should be a negative 2 there. All right, so now what we're going to do uh, is going to look at some matrix multiplication. So we're going to start by reflecting the triangle over the y-axis. Now let's consider first what's going to happen to those points. If I reflect this triangle over the y-axis, what that's going to do is that's going to take those points and it's going to change your x-coordinates of those points. So even though we're going over the y-axis, this is going to change the x-coordinates. And the x-coordinates in that original matrix that I had, so that original matrix, let me rewrite it. The x-coordinates is the top row. So I need to multiply this by a matrix that is only going to affect the top row. Now we're going to multiply it by a 2 by 2 matrix. And remember, because of our order, the 2 by 2 has to go in front. That's going to result in a 2 by 3, which is the same that we have, and that's what we want. Now one of the things you guys saw in your last homework was if I multiplied by this matrix, that matrix is called the identity matrix. And if I multiply something by the identity matrix, it doesn't actually change it. Uh, it keeps it the same. So instead of multiplying it by this same matrix, I don't want to keep it the exact same, but I do want those values to be the same. The only thing I want to be different is I want the negative sign on just the top row to be different. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a negative where I just erased, right there. So if I make that one negative, now when I go through and I do my matrix multiplication, I would do negative 1 times 2 plus 0, which stays the same. Negative 1 times 0 plus 0 negative 1 times 4 plus 0. So as you can see, that second 0 there, it's keeping those values the same. Now I go to the bottom row and do my multiplication. 
0 times 2, and then 1 times negative 1. 0 times 0, 1 times 4, 0 times negative 4, and 1 times 2. So by the fact that that last row there has that 1, that's keeping that bottom row from changing. So all that's changing is just the negative signs on that top row. And that's what's going to create this new triangle that's been reflected over the y-axis. All right, so let's try another one. This time we're going to take this triangle and reflect it over the x-axis. So reflecting it over the x-axis, that's going to change our y-coordinates, which is going to change the second row of my original matrix. So again, I'm going to start with my original matrix. I'm going to multiply by some 2 by 2. That's going to have some combinations of zeros and 1s. So again, I only want to change the signs of the second row. I don't want to change the actual values. I don't want to change where those values are. So again, I'm still going to start with that identity matrix. But this time, because I want the second row to change signs, I want the negative to be down there. Because now, when I do my multiplication, first row, first column, that's not going to change that value. It's just going to be 1 times 2 plus 0. 1 times 0 plus 0, and 1 times negative 4 plus 0. So that didn't change from the original. But now when I go and do the second one, first bottom row, first column, 2 times 0, negative 1 times negative 1 is now a positive 1. 0 times 0 plus negative 1 times 4, and then 0 plus negative 2. And there's my new matrix that's been reflected over the x-axis. All right, so now we're going to get into rotations. Uh, so rotations can be done very similar. Uh, the hardest part about this, though, is we need to consider what's actually happening to the coordinates in order to rotate them 90 degrees. So let's start by looking at 90 degrees counterclockwise. So the easiest thing to see probably is if I take the point 0, 4. So if I take 0, 4 and I rotate that point 90 degrees counterclockwise, then that point is going to be rotating this way 90 degrees, which means it's going to become negative 4, 0. So another example, um, if I take 2, negative 1, if I rotate that point 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise, again, I'm going in that same direction. So rotating this point 90 degrees counterclockwise, was we, what we want is for that point to then be 90 degrees, which means it's going to create a 90 degree angle. So that means a couple of things. One, it means that those two lines are perpendicular. And what we know about those perpendicular lines is that their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. Okay, so what we can do then from looking at those slopes, if you look at this point right here, that has a slope of a negative one-half, and this one has a slope of positive two. Uh, so we're going to apply that same idea in order to get these points. So let's look at what's actually happening to my coordinates. So I start with an xy coordinate, and then in order to rotate that figure uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise, what I'm doing is I'm taking that xy coordinate, and then I'm making flipping the x and y's, and I'm making a negative y comma x. So again, with 0, 4, that became negative 4, 0. And with 2, negative 1, that became 1, positive 2. So you flip the order, and then the new first coordinate has a different sign. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what that's going to look like in a matrix form. So again, I'm going to start with the same original matrix. So 2, negative 1, 0, 4, negative 4, 2. And this time, one big difference, I can't just start with that normal identity matrix. Because if I keep that same identity matrix, that's not going to change my numbers. And my numbers actually need to change here because I need to change the location of them. I need the x and the y's to actually flip places. Now, I don't want the values, though, of these numbers to change. I just want them to change where they are. So I'm still going to use a combination of zeros and ones. The only difference is this time, I want my zeros to be here and my ones to be there. So now the next thing I do is I just need to figure out where that negative is going to go. Well, what I want to be negative is I want the y coordinate, which is going to be the new first coordinate. So that's going to be this one right here. So now when I actually apply this, 0 times 2 is 0, negative 1 times negative 1 is 
positive 1. Next space would be first row, second column. So that would be 0 times 0, and then negative 4. Then I would do first row, last column, 0 times negative 4, negative 1 times 2. All right, then I would go to the next one. I would do the bottom row, bottom row and first column. 2 gets multiplied by 1, so it does not change the sign. 1 gets multiplied by 0, 1 times negative 4. So you can see the x and the y's flipped places. It only changed the sign of that top row, though, which is what we wanted. All right, so now let's look at 90 degrees clockwise. So again, if I were to start with an x, y, very similarly, I still want to flip the x and the y. But in order to go the opposite direction and go clockwise this time, it's going to be y comma negative x. So think about 0, 4. 0, 4 is going to rotate to be 4, 0. That 0 doesn't really change sign. 0 is still 0. It doesn't matter if it's negative. So then to do this, again, I'm going to start with the same initial matrix. Again, I want the position of these x's and y's to change. So I'm going to do zeros and ones this way. But this time, I want the x coordinate, which is now in the second place in the bottom row to be the negative. So my negative is going to go there. So now when I do my multiplication, 0 times 2, 1 times negative 1, 0 times 0, 1 times 4, and then 0 times negative 4, 1 times 2. So again, those values did not change signs. They just flipped locations. And now when I do the bottom row, first column, I'm going to end up with negative 2, 0 plus 0 and positive 4. So I've changed the signs of those second ones. All right, so the last one we're going to look at, I'm just rotating the figure 180 degrees. So again, let's look at an example here. If I rotate 0, 4, 180 degrees, it's going to come down here to negative, or 0, negative 4. If I were to rotate 2, negative 1, 180 degrees would be over here at negative 2, positive 1. So this time, the x and the y coordinate are not changing. What's changing, though, is the positive and negative signs on both of them. So again, very similar. We'll start with the same matrix. But this time, since I don't want the actual place of the x and y to change, this is going to resemble more of the identity matrix that keeps them in the same position. But what's different this time is I need the signs of both of them to change. So I want both of those to be negative values. Now I can actually do my multiplication. So this becomes negative 2, 0, positive 4, positive 1, negative 4, and negative 2. And then on any of these, if you wanted to check to make sure they were accurate, you could always plot the points of that resulting matrix and just make sure that shape actually looks how we expect it to. So like this one, negative 2, positive 1, 0, 4, sorry, 0, uh, negative 4, and then 4, negative 2. And those should be my resulting points, which they are. And if you were to plot that, so this is C, this is B, and this is A, you can see that those that has been rotated 180 degrees. All right, so the last thing we're going to look at is just a little chart that's going to sum up everything that we just talked about. So I'm just going to write those rules down. So again, translating vertically, I take that matrix and I add a matrix to it. Um, so that matrix, it doesn't matter what's on the top row. The value that's in the bottom row is going to affect it vertically. When I translate it horizontally, what matters is the value that's in the top row. That's what's going to change it left and right. And remember, it doesn't matter. We don't have the same rules as we did with functions where uh, it has to be backwards or anything. We can just write it the way that it is. Dilations, we just take that, scale, that scalar and multiply it by that matrix. Uh, just keep in mind, if that's greater than 1, then that's going to be an enlargement. And if it's less than 1, it's going to be a reduction. All right, we looked at reflecting. So when we reflected across the x-axis, it did not change the x and y coordinates, so we started with the identity. What it did change the of reflecting across the x changed that vertical, which is the second row. So my negative was down there. 
when we reflect it across the y, again, we start with the identity. But because we want to change the x-coordinate, we made that value negative. All right, and then looking at y equals x, that's actually one we didn't do an example for. Uh, but this is very similar to what we just talked about with inverses. If you reflect a function over the line y equals x, that's the inverse. Uh, and remember, the way that we found an inverse was we changed the x and the y's. So reflecting over the line y equals x is going to be the matrix that doesn't change positive or negatives, but instead it just changes the order of where those locations are, which is going to be a matrix that looks like that. Again, no negatives, but by it not being the identity, that's going to flip our x and y's. All right, then finally we looked at rotating. So rotating clockwise. Again, we have to actually change those x and y coordinates. Rotating counterclockwise. And then finally rotating 180 degrees. And just remember with these, whenever we're doing the multiplication, we always put that uh, rotation or reflection matrix first because the order with multiplication does matter. All right, so that's it for looking at transformations of matrices. Uh, next class, we're going to actually start combining matrices with systems.